Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your speaking and welcome to the introduction summary uh, video for multiplayer game number 59. This time it's going to be a no quitters six player free for all game. Uh, no quitters is a steam group. You can find the link in on my main channel page in the about section to the NQ profile. Just check it out, read the rules, join the chat. Chat is public and ask one of the moderators for an invite and get some cool free for all multiplayer games in Civilization 5. Together in this game, I've got we've got Wurstel Sepp, uh, Tabo, Shaho. Sphinx and Bex 76. Now, I played with three of those players, or at least I know a little bit more about three of those players, uh, which is Wurstel Sepp. He's uh, a great builder, I gotta admit that. He's a great builder and he makes a very well timed attacks. Uh, about time attacks, I'm basically saying that he knows when to do a crossbow rush or do an artillery rush or a bomber rush, infantry rush. Well, all, the, all those timings attacks, he basically fills them very, very well. Tabel, you probably remember him uh, from my India game not that long ago. Uh, this is the guy without a plan, but overall pretty strong player. Now, Shaho. Shaho is a tremendously good duelist. Mm, duelist. And not that great in free for alls, but I mean the longer free for alls. Uh, late game is not that strong side of him, but overall he's a very, very good player. Now, Sphinx and Beck76, I don't recall games with them, uh, so I cannot tell too much. Mm, about them at this point. Now I rolled Maya. I rolled Maya in this game, so a pretty strong civilization. And on top of that, uh, well, you can probably see my starting location. It looked pretty, pretty strong. All right, now, so spoiler alert. If you do not, I, I, I just want to say to the people that made comment. Mm, to make separate videos, I mean like the introduction and the summary. Well, I had all the thought about this and I think it's just spamming too much videos at this point. I know it's not that um, good to, you know, if you want to see only the introduction and then watch the game and go back to the summary, check the same video twice. But basically you still have to check two videos. I know it's a little bit not, you know, like probably it would be easier to check the video in before the game and then another one after the game but still the purpose of this video i mean like i do a small introduction in the game but the purpose of this videos uh, is to give people who don't have that much time or do not want to spend the time to watch all the game and are just interested in some crucial moments of the game. So basically, this is why I do those introduction uh, summaries, because I want to give a chance to people who actually just want to see only uh, specific parts of the game to actually know where to look for the parts that they are interested in and to not uh, watch the whole game if they don't want to. I mean, like, I would expect something from other learn to players, especially when you upload a material that material that just lasts for so, so much time. Um, so I would expect them to make a summary like that. So I'm sorry to the people that would like to have introduction and Mm, summary in separate videos but I think this is just uh, giving too much videos basically I mean, like one video is is enough I mean, those introduction summaries basically mm, around half of the people at least from the statistics watch those uh, so I'm guessing that half maybe maybe not the full half but at least the majority of that half 
actually looks at those videos just to see the summary maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm right but i think it's not that much big of a deal to check the same video twice you still have to mm, turn on two videos maybe i'll just add a timestamp uh, add a timestamp where the actual summary starts so you can basically click in the description description or at the start of the video to just go to the summary uh right right away uh, so i guess this is some sort of a compromise that we could make all right so one more time spoiler alert if you do not want to know how the game went please stop watching right now and go to the second position of the playlist where the actual game starts so Wurstelsepp rolled Austria, Tabel, uh, Tabel rolled Poland, I believe Shaho rolled, mm, Shaho, Shaho rolled Indonesia, and now Sphinx and Bex, one of them had Russia and one of them had Carthage. I don't rem remember right now, but this will be probably explained in uh, next screenshots. Uh, now this is my general view of the starting location as you can see my capital is really really sweet mm, not only that i have a mountain but i have spots for two more cities mm, actually three more cities that can be placed on the mountain and one more city that can snatch king solomon's yes i got king solomon's in the north so basically my general idea was to skip coast since my capital is not on the coast i kind of prefer not to go on the coast when my capital is not coastal just because the majority of the production is at your capital so it's kind of hard to compete with another player that has a coastal capital when it comes to building ships and i kind of don't want to risk it so i prefer that i did see the coast but i just prefer to go inland capital on the mountain and i'm actually pretty happy with this because i'm having marble in my capital river and some horses uh, nice food so basically a lovely capital and a lot of land to expand so my general de decision was to go of course um, to open tradition go liberty free settler uh, plant four cities and go for national national college now my closest neighbor were poland but poland seemed to go for hanging gardens so i was not that much afraid of him now austria austria had very nice gold and i was kind of afraid that he will try to compass drush me uh, so i try to set up at least a little bit of defense but thankfully between me and him was a nice line of city state that would provide some sort of a buffer between uh, me and austria this is a nice screenshot showing how good uh, my early game was i well i did wander around a little bit i didn't go too fast for national college but i managed to snatch great wall in my capital <laughs> i managed to get pyramids in my king solomon city i managed to get great library in my uh king solomon city before getting national college so a really really great um, start so i was on my merry way to get national college and i saw a pretty nice uh, fifth city spot in the jungle on a mountain between the two city states um, so basically the early game was looking nice though austria was uh, doing great um, as well uh, Poland decided to go for Hanging Gardens Petra, basically in his capital, so delaying the city sprawl just a little bit. And on the other side, I didn't have too much information, but if I remember correctly, not much has been happening. So basically, all out peaceful um, economic development of every single player at this stage of the game. Something 
unexpected happened um there was a proposition for no nukes in this game so we made a vote and yes we basically banned nukes for this game and not only nukes uh xcom and stealth bombers so basically on turn 92 things changed Mm, a little bit concerning the late game strategy uh, since there will be no nukes, no XCOM and then no cell bombers in this game uh, so basically military approach was a little bit different uh, from this point and now I was pretty happy because I was not expecting this that this will happen but I was pretty happy with the Pantheon choose choice that I made I choose healing pantheon and I made it on purpose though I wouldn't expect that this will turn out so so important mm, now I had a very nice religion and at this stage of the game I was doing pretty well science wise but with no big surprise I was not leading the scoreboard uh, just because Austria had a very very nice cities as well but the most important part, he had a very nice gold amount and lots of city states around him. Uh, so he was just buying off slowly city states. Now I tried to ally the line of city states between me and Austria. Uh, basically, uh, well, I was trying to ally every single city state, but most importantly, I was focusing on the city states between me and Austria, so he will not be able to uh, to buy those city states when he actually tries to declare uh, declare war on me. Poland expanded into four city, uh, doing pretty well as well. Now the other players. Mm, I believe Cottage was a little bit stuffed between Russia and Indonesia but his secret plan was basically to go for frigates and actually try to deal as much damage from the sea as possible later on but for me I was just focusing on getting a great development and somewhere in the back of my mind a crazy idea <laughs> spawned that I can actually sneak in with this good early advantage. I can actually sneak in Eiffel Tower Modern Era before going for uh, factories and artilleries because I was kind of afraid. Well, first of all, I had a nice science advantage at this point. I was not that much afraid about early attack because I had a great wall and I was trying to keep up army um, just around score number two. Uh, so I was hoping that I can actually sneak in modern era for early autocracy and uh, then go for military units basically. So I managed to do it. So I hit modern era with Oxford University at turn 128 and again at the back of my mind there was a crazy idea though I gotta admit that I was thinking when choosing Pantheon the healing Pantheon I was thinking about going autocracy I at least I think so that I was going autocracy and having great bombers but now in the course of the game some other idea got into my mind and it was actually getting well 100% going autocracy hoping for oil hoping for for getting double resources from autocracy and just as a cherry on the pie getting futurism now if you do not know how the futurism works well futurism works like that that when you spawn a great writer artist or musician you get 250 tourism to all the players you know so i kind of thought that since there's no nukes there's no stealth bombers and there's no XCOM. Maybe I can apply a little bit of extra tourism pressure mm, thanks to autocracy. And on top of that, 
get the major policy that I want, which is double resources to get extra super planes that will just bombard, bombard and will be unstoppable in the late game. Uh, so thanks to my science advantage, I actually managed to get to modern era first and now I was trying to focus on to actually stay alive. So getting the crucial uh, Gatling guns and and cavalry tech to try and defend against any possible artillery rush. Basically for me there was not much happening. Um, most emotional part was to actually stop uh, Austria from getting too much city-states by marriage. Of course I had limited resources and I'm not sure that actually other players try to stop him, but I was trying to do a lot of quests, especially on those three states in between me and Austria, and try to buy off or at least do quests uh, to the allied city states so he actually slow him down just a little bit but he was definitely growing he was growing crazy he had a lot of cities bought up more city states so he was basically leading the scoreboard um, slowly starting to lead science and uh, not mentioning hammers his hammers are just crazy now this is the culture overview of the amount of culture that i mean tourists that i actually managed to get uh to this stage of the game and most of it is from that autocracy tenant it would seem that actually a lot of people did not expect um, that anybody would try to get tourists so that was absolutely working uh, into my advantage at this stage of the game and economically i was just trying to get the crucial buildings like factories public schools amphitheaters and stuff like that um, especially infantry infantry for defense uh, against austria's artilleries i think i actually skipped artillery and i was planning to go just research labs uh, get infantry for defense go for oil and then go for planes to start pumping out those crazy planes and getting of course barracks and armory and the extra experience from autocracy tenants so I could actually just build bombers uh, with healing promotion uh, right from the start. So this was my general plan at this stage of the game. And I think it was working fine. On the other side though, uh, Indonesia was killed by uh, Kautic, uh by Beck 76 Russia was, I think he was trying to go for tourism as well. He was sitting on four cities and not doing much uh, outside of his borders, basically. So he's just sitting there trying to, I guess, grow, echo, build some wonders and stuff like that. Uh, I actually lost a couple of wonders to him. Now, Kaltic decided to actually attack Poland. Poland had coastal cities. And Kaltic decided to attack Poland after Indonesia and he actually managed to take one city from Tabel. Now from this point of the game, Tabel, well, he seemed to not be pleased with the outcome. So, well, he started to act a little bit random, I would say, like fight on both fronts, basically help, mm, help a little bit to everybody i mean like he was um uh helping me a little bit uh saying to go to war with austria but well it was hard to read um, on, on him which you will i will actually show you in another screenshot now we come now to the i think the most crucial moment of the game uh, for me, at least. Now, this is Mombasa. <laughs> and as you can notice, Mombasa is my ally. But four seconds ago, he was, that city state was not my ally. What actually happened, and well, Wurstel Sepp actually decided to attack me finally. So he planned to buy Mombasa from me and declare war on me 
So this city state will actually work in his favor. But what did happen? He was a little bit too slow, or I was just well, uh, he was too slow. He was too slow, and I was too lucky. Basically, I read the message that Austria is his ally. I checked the city state and just gave him money right away to buy it out. So, as you can probably see, you, you see the on the right side, there's now ally of Mombasa. This message did not fall down yet. So it was like seconds behind and right on top of those messages there are three more messages going, I mean like four more messages going, which says Austria declared war on you and city-state allies declared war on you. And now I would like to say that I was expecting this on this turn, but this is not the case. This was pure luck. I was in the right moment at the right time to counter a uh, planned um, assault basically. So this moment was so so lucky and I think this little moment decided the game. I mean like of course the early game is one thing but this moment had the most and the hugest impact on what followed from uh, from now and now let me just show you what happened uh, what happened next so following things that happen thanks to Mombasa being my ally I was able to defend the initial attack mm, I was able to take up to normal bombers get a decent number number of bombers uh, so I actually started to push Austria back uh, managed to kill some of his units. Now the problem was he was greatly ahead in tech at this stage of the game. He had crazy production, so my planes started to have a lot of trouble because they were there were jet fighters in the air. Mm, so that kind of messed things just a little bit, and I had basically no aluminium for jet fighters. Uh, so I decided. Uh, I kind of knew that I will not be able to get a science victory. So what I try to do is to actually focus on the tourism and get to National Visitor Center and get to Internet and try to win culture win because I can't. Well, for a second there, I was really thinking that I can uh, get the war in the right direction. But first of all, I had a real trouble getting those uh, jet fighters down but I think in the end I would be able to wear him down but the problem was Poland actually decided to help Austria so as I said earlier Tabo um, Tabo decided to actually mess things randomly a little bit especially for me with the great general uh, he planted a great general on my land basically uh, so I had to use a great general to retake the land. He was aiding Austria with units and then he actually tried to pillage all of my land. But in the end he paid off the price because Russia was actually going for mm, for him in the end. Uh, so well it kind of backfired on him just a little bit. But the real reason, I mean the real problem was I was not able to break Austria down. So basically this situation is the best what got in here for me but from this stage I basically had to back up I pillaged some lands I killed some, killed some units with the planes but jet fighters and mobile sums and modern armor was just a little bit too much uh, for me at this moment so situation started to look a little bit bad again well, as you can see in here, uh, Austria is definitely slaughtering me in. I think he had double hammers at this stage of the game and a couple of percents ahead of me in technologies. What I decided to do is to go for National Visitor Center, tourism, and really try to get as much tourism as possible. 
hoping for a great musician that well hoping for a great musician i was still believing that i can with my healing pantheon uh, bomber strategy actually get him down or at least slow him down i managed to get some rocket artillery of my own uh, finally some land units so i was really hoping that i can actually defend mombasa and push him back again to his capital but my plan b was getting as much tourism as possible and trying to bomb with the great musician later on uh, and achieving a cultural victory because austria was the only culture threat at this stage of the game and i knew that i cannot beat him to science there was just no possibility like that so my only chance would be to actually take his capital before he will be able to launch parts to space or just get a tourism win so i tried to do both of those things uh, at the same um, at the same time so now a uh, little bit of a slideshow now this is a screen of culture overview on turn 213 as you can see uh, basically i'm influential with every single civilization except austria i am missing a little bit of tourism <laughs> uh, to get austria uh, down and i just spawned a great musician so this is how this looks uh, culture wise this is how it looks military wise as you can see i managed <laughs> i managed to push uh, push austria back with some rocket artilleries the help of my bombers and fighters a little bit of jet fighters of my own finally uh, but i don't think i would be able to get his couple before he would be able to launch the space as you can see in grass he already has another spaceship uh, part so he was really going great for science victory i believe he had well no more like couple of turns uh, to actually launch to space so this is military situation and now you can see a great musician on chichen itza just sitting in there and now let me show you how this ended and yes sir you're correct after bombing the last great music the last the only great musician i would get in this game on Austrian territory, Yorus achieves his first culture victory in a multiplayer game. I was so super happy and excited, it was just like crazy. We had a chat with Austria with Wurstesep, I probably pronounced it absolutely wrong, I'm sorry. And he said he was really, I think, three or four turns before finishing Space Victory. So that was just in the nick of time, basically, uh, getting a culture victory. But it worked. Surprisingly, it worked mm, <laughs> pretty cool. And not such a bad time after all. Turn 240, it's really not a bad time uh, for a victory in a six player free for all game with this much war actually now <clears throat> if i could summarize this game i think there's like at least three crucial points of the game uh, that actually decided how this worked first of all i had a very nice line of city states well of course not mentioning my spawning location and king salomon and stuff like that but the crucial parts were the four city states between me and Austria and the fact that Poland actually decided to go for Hanging Gardens Petra which slowed him down. This is number one, well actually two, but this is it. Now the number two is, uh, is getting of course the healing pantheon mm, but first rushing autocracy. I really think that the choice to rush out to Krasi with the um, with banning nukes at the same time and banning Ixon and Stell was a pretty good idea to approach this game. Uh, so basically banning nukes, Ixcom and Stealth, 
and going out to crossing was the second most important thing and the third maybe on par with banning nukes was the fact that I luckily and I repeat it one more time I luckily managed to stop Wurschel step from uh, allying city-state um, right before he waged war on me this was pure luck and I think that this really really was the most important thing that actually decided that I was able to defend, counterattack, then defend again, and counterattack again against Austria. This little lucky thing. So, culture victory, finally. Yay! So, thank you very much for the game, everyone. <laughs> really, really cool game. I enjoyed it really, really much. I hope you will enjoy it too. So, thank you very much for watching, and if you're interested in watching this game, go to the second position of the playlist. So, best wishes, yours out.